So my finals week is almost approaching. This is the weekend before finals week, and uh, I've sort of been sitting around waiting for the time that is to study. And of course, you don't study the week before finals day. You study right before finals, which is you know, famously a good way to get good grades. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos, um, a lot of like the West Life and these guys, and. Uh, Checking out some of the stuff they've been posting, and there's a lot of videos about just old laptops. You know, I've com completely forgotten that I used to make videos like the video I made about the old Toshiba, uh, what was that, TS420 or 240 something like, 2400? Um, those sorts of things. And I've got plenty of old machines, I just never really do videos about them. Um, I alluded to this one in one in a video that I posted a few months ago about um, junky old bedroom laptops, and uh, this is one that I didn't show in that. So this one I actually found in a tech waste bin. So you know how a lot of companies will have a lot of old, old junky laptops that they throw away. So this was in one of those junk bins at my uh, workplace. It is an old Lenovo T60, circa around 2007. Um, let me see. I can I can talk a little bit about the specs. I've actually got Specy running here. Go ahead and get this guy open. So it's got an Intel Core, Core Duo, uh, T2500. And I'm actually looking at the spec sheets on Lenovo's website. Um, it's really good. They, this, they post a lot of information about these machines, like way more than ASUS does on, on there. Just a lot of specifications and really fairly detailed stuff. So uh, I was able to sort of um, skimp together, or I should, I should say study up on the innards of this machine. But it's got an Intel T2500. Um, dual core processor that was actually disabled so it was only running one core as one core when I found it in the garbage. It was running Windows 2000 so it must have been some uh, some uh, enterprise company. I mean obviously it was in the, it was in the, big, the, um, the garbage bin of a, a company so it was very obviously uh, just dumped out so it was an enterprise laptop and I sort of rescued it and cleaned it out um, so Motherboard information, temperature is about 40, 40 degrees. It seems to run pretty cool, more or less. Um, it's actually doing some stuff right now. Let me check resource monitor. Hold on. Um, I'm not sure what it's running right now. Windows stat is actually just. Oh, oh that's gotta be. That's gotta be that idle thing. Come on. Oh, what have I done here? Come on. Oh, I see. I've scooted all the way down the list. Foolish me. So Win Windows directory is just right now checking the hard drive. I'm just trying to see what kind of... Oh, should, so it should be done. I don't know why it's still taking up all that, all that CPU time. Actually, I'll just close it. I know it's on this machine. So basically, um, yeah, I got this old laptop um, pretty much free. It's got a 100 gigabyte Hitachi Travel Star that I've partitioned into about 60-40 Windows, so Windows in about 60 gigs. About 40 gigs is for uh, Linux distribution, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, it's got a few issues with the drive. I th I'm pretty sure they're hard drive issues. Um, I don't remember exactly what it was doing, because it's pretty much chilled out. It's not really doing so much anymore, but it was, it was getting some weirdness. But I actually do have, so it's a SATA 1 drive, so 1.5 gigabits per second, maximum through whatever. Uh, I've actually got an old, or an old quote unquote SATA 3 drive. It's a 1 terabyte. It's in, it's in this uh, Samsung solid, st solid state drive um, box just because I have It's from my old laptop or my other laptop, which is much more modern than this one. Um, let's see. Power on hours is about 437 days. I don't know how long that is, but comparing that with the hard drive that I, the oldest hard drive that I have in my desktop system. Opening that is from a machine from actually about the same period, but it's got a lot more power on hours. It's got 740 days and 8 hours, which is, hold on, just about 2, 2.02 2 years. So two years of on time for that one hard drive, and it's still, it's still kicking. This one uh, is giving me errors, and it's uh, not nearly that old, so maybe about a year of on time. It's still pretty good. I don't see a head flying hours. Uh, smart uh, statistic on there, but this one's got, let's see, where's, where's head flying hours? Head fly rights, blah, 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 blah. Oh, this chart doesn't have it either. It must be kind of new. Well, anyway, I want to keep talking about this machine. It's got a 
I guess I should probably just take you on the outside, shouldn't I? Let's see, was there anything else I wanted to show you in here? I don't need that open anymore. I showed you the partitions. And, uh, yeah, so now it's dropped back down to idle. I wish I hadn't closed Specky, but it seems to idle around 35 to 40 degrees, which is pretty good. But that's on an outdated version of Specky, so maybe maybe they don't report the right information. So I'll go ahead and close this for a moment and show you. So this is the condition it's in. Uh, very scratched. Um, it's got this sort of slightly rubbery material on the top. This is actually the first ThinkPad that I've owned. Um, my, my father had one a few years for a work computer and then he got rid of it or I guess he gave it back to his workplace. <sighs> and um, But yeah, this is my first experience of having an actual ThinkPad to use as my own and I've sort of fallen in love with it even though it's nine years old. Or actually, yeah, 2007, so about nine years old. Um, as you can see, it's taped. It's uh, not 100%. That's the hard drive cover. So it's got a SATA 1 hard drive in there, 100 gigabytes. Uh, so it's seen some uh, some rough love. In fact, the data that was on this machine beforehand, so it had Windows 2000. It was not encrypted, which is interesting because it was a company computer. Usually they run some sort of encryption. Usually InfoSec wants some sort of thing like that. But... Uh, Oh, it's sleeping, so it won't open. It's got a uh, optical drive. Let's see, CD rewritable and DVD ROM, so you can watch DVDs on this. Um, I was actually trying to. Um, I've been ripping a lot of DVDs that we had in my house, so right now I'm going through Blue Planet, I'm just using that as backups um, or creating backups of those. But um, it's actually a little bit slow on this one, so it's not really much of a point. As you can see, oh my goodness, excuse me. Um, on the surface, there's a lot of scratches. I think that a lot of these came out of the dumpster um, because it was just sort of tossed in with a bunch of sharp stuff. So it's a little bit scratched, but it's a ThinkPad, so it'll it'll last. It'll survive. Um, two USB 2 things there. Those are a little bit spotty. They don't always work. And a, and a battery. Now, the hinge on this guy for the lid is fine, but the battery, it looks like it was maybe dropped or something. So the battery's a little bit loose and cracked there next to the power adapter. And this is a pretty standard Lenovo 20 volt barrel type adapter. I believe it's 20 volts at least. And for the CPU cooler, there is intake on the back and out uh, blowing out on the right, which is actually the left side, I should say. Oh, I didn't mention the graphics in this at all. This has a uh, ATI Radeon Mobility, um, let's see, X1400. Um, so that's actually kind of capable, 128 megabytes. So there's the these the uh, blowout from the CPU cooler, uh, VGA out, uh, monitor or sorry not monitor modem, um, Ethernet. I think that's 10 100. Um, I'm not sure. That's a little. No, those are just activity lights for the Ethernet, of course. Uh, microphone in, audio out. The audio out is pretty good quality actually. Um, just just you know from listening with my ears. Please zoom or please focus. There we go. So. There is another USB 2. I believe it's USB 2. Maybe it's USB 1. 2007 it should be 2. So, um, and also a PCMCIA slot, of course. It's for good old redundancy. You've actually got an IR emitter on the front there. And a hard switch for your Wi-Fi adapter. Now, I also want to show you that this has got, let's see. It's got a sticker for Windows Home Pre, or let's see, I think it's probably Home Pre, no, it's Professional. It's Lenovo's flavor of XP Professional. And then there's all kinds of numbers on the bottom here that I don't necessarily want you to see. Um, but let's see, I want to turn this over. Oh, Windows. Designed for Windows XP, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, 2007. 20 volts, 4.5 amps. Blah, 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 blah. So, <clears throat> I guess I don't need to show you those numbers, but it doesn't matter. I'm not using XP on this thing anyway, I'm using 7 Ultimate, 32-bit. So, that's it. Um, let me pop this guy back open. I will log back in. And I'll actually close out of Windows. One of my favorite things about this is it has something called a Think Light. So if you press Function, and then, I'm sorry, I don't know why this isn't focusing, come on. So if you press function and page up at the same time, so I'm going to reach all the way over here, press page up with my thumb, this little light comes on, it's called the Think Light, trademark. Um, so, yeah, other than that, um, 
I haven't really talked about the actual hardware of the, the device, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, I'll actually shut it down. Re I'll actually reboot into my version of Ubuntu that I'm using um, and talk a little bit about this. So this is sort of the classic old school ThinkPad keyboard layout. Really, really nice. Um, got the track point on it, so it's very comfortable. The um, the let's see the the key switch depth is also very comfortable, very usable. It's sort of it's sort of squishy like a membrane keyboard, but it's really got a good feel to it. Um, insert and delete area with home and end and page it up and down is uh, very usable. The Think Vantage button, I don't actually have all the software since I'm running a 7 on this and it was designed for XP. A lot of the drivers and whatnot work pretty hard to get going on it. There's the, the boot up screen. I'll go ahead and load up Ubuntu. Um, yeah, actually, he's pretty happy with Ubuntu. Um, I've got GNOME. 1404, I believe. Um, so yeah, it's got actually hardware uh, volume and mute buttons there, which are very nice. A little bit confusing because sometimes if you're used to adjusting the volume in the Windows software, then uh, it can be a little confusing because you might have it muted there. You might have it full blast there and also full blast here, and there's no visual indicator. But it's nice to have actual hardware buttons. Oh, uh, let's see. Internet forward and back buttons. If you use a Lenovo, you're probably very familiar with this. The blue enter button. Love it. And, uh, of course, as I said, the track point, the scroll bar, and then the right and left click. And then they also got a little tiny touchpad down here, which isn't great, but it works, I guess. Intel Centrino Duo. Designed for XP. Will you please focus? Really? I'll take it like the silver. Designed for Windows XP, compatible with Vista, graphics by ATI. Um, go ahead and sign into this as well. Excuse me. So this is, I believe, a new uh, blah 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 blah. Ubuntu GNOME 1404 should be at least. It runs pretty well. I mean, with Ubuntu, I think that the primary bottleneck with this machine is that the hard drive is not very fast. And part of the reasoning of putting this guy in, I mean, they should, I think this should be a 5400 RPM drive, but this one is as well, but I think it should be faster. Even though it's using the same, it'll be limited to SATA one speeds, whatever. It'd be worth a try. I don't think there's anything important on there. I just use it for backups whenever I'm uh, doing stuff with, doing stuff with uh, backups or anything like that. So, yeah. Um, I guess I'm not sure really what I should show you. This graphics acceleration for all the fancy pretty parts of GNOME are actually quite good. So I'll open Chrome up and... Nope, not what I wanted. Well, actually, I could open up System Monitor as well, give you a view at that. What else should I get? So the Super Key um, sort of does this with a display if you haven't used Ubuntu GNOME before. Um, and when you have multiple things open, it's sort of like the this view in Windows 8 or Windows 10 even. So, and sort of like the Unix style, Mac OS X style uh, view, except it's Mac to the super button, which is a little bit tough to get used to, but that button, there we go. That button shares purpose, which they search, or I should say, that button shares uh, functionality with the search. So if you just start typing in, as you saw me do that with the, when I accidentally pressed N, it'll start searching for things on that computer, on your computer. So, yeah, um, a little bit choppy, but. I actually probably shouldn't have opened up Chrome because Chrome tends to sort of blast your hardware as much as it can. But um, yeah, there you go. Memory and swap history. Swap hasn't been touched yet, and there are two gigs of RAM on this machine. I really have just sort of bummed out with telling you <laughs> the specs of this machine. I apologize. But um, yeah, so some Windows things still work. So Windows Desktop or Super Desktop brings you down to the desktop, and pressing it again brings it back. Um, it's very usable, yeah, honestly. It's all got, it's all got, uh, let's see, if you use super and left, it should snap it to the left and right and up and blah, blah, blah. So it's very usable, very, win uh, very friendly for Windows users who want to get into Linux. I recommend it. It's also visually appealing. And if you're running old hardware, it still runs pretty well. I don't have much better of a thing to show you, but you can see graphs for both CPU cores and memory. You can just see it tailing off there, but yeah, it's holding steady at about 40% of 
two gigs, which is 800 megabytes. Oh my god, it's Yawn Central up here. I hope you're not yawning as well. Um, so that's that. And I've got, I'm testing out a new uh, editing suite called Kid and Live. And it's on Windows and uh, Linux and maybe also OS X. I'm not sure. I don't know, maybe, maybe Lightbooth or Lightbox or whatever that other one was, was on there. But this is directly in the built-in repositories. So you can just, you know, sudo app get uh, Kid and Live, I think, should just work like that. Maybe you need to do client or something like that. But it works. And I've actually got this thing where if you press tilde on the keyboard, it brings you down a terminal. And you can just sudo whoopsie, sudo su, and then put in your password, and then you got root access just by pressing tilde, and it it's very smooth, and it's actually got transparent transparency on there, so you can see behind um, what you're working on behind there. So it's actually pretty darn handy. Um, yeah, so I haven't tried uh, Ubuntu 16 yet, I've heard some, I've seen some funny reports from, I believe, was it UXW Bill, or was it US, I don't remember, one of these guys was making a very saucy video about uh, Ubuntu 14, Ubuntu 16 kind of sucking, but yeah, so that is an old Lenovo T60 that I found in the trash, that is very happy running Windows, very happy running uh, Linux, um, or I should say Ubuntu. I actually ran Windows 10 on this for a little while. I went ahead and tried to do the the update offer that's still going on. That'll be going bad in July um, for upgrading Windows 7 to Windows 10. And I just gave it a shot, see if it would work. After making a backup onto that old iOmega drive that I've also made videos about in the past, and um, <clears throat> it wasn't very happy. I, it it wanted to. So the thing is, the Windows upgrade said that I could upgrade and I can go ahead and run Windows 10 if I wanted. So I went ahead and did that. But it turns out that the drivers for the ATI X1400 um, don't actually exist for Windows 10. There are some for Windows 7, as you can see it worked fine, graphics acceleration, on the Windows 7 partition, or boot I should say. But for some reason, Windows 10 doesn't have it. And I guess, you know, there's gotta be multiple reasons of that, DirectX support, all that sort of stuff. But um, yeah, it's weird that they insisted that I get the upgrade even though they didn't have a working driver for it. So I used the basic Windows driver or Vision graphics driver and it, and it barely worked. It crashed all the time and gave me plenty of blue screens. So I ended up rolling back to 7 and then I ended up putting GNOME 14 on here or you know, Ubuntu GNOME 14, um, which I'm actually very happy with. So I can use a remote desktop on the Windows side or let's see, I've actually been using TeamViewer recently to remote into my desktop here and uh, get work done when I want to do stuff in class that needs a little bit of umph. so it's really quite good actually so for paying absolutely nothing well actually no I had to pay for the adapter I didn't have an adapter for this thing for a while but I got this at uh, RePC in Seattle and it's you know the generic Lenovo 20 volt thing it cost me a pretty penny but I'd say it was worth it because I believe that most of these era Lenovo's uh, ThinkPads use the same use the same barrel connector. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, you can expect some more videos going up from me in the near future. I'm almost done with school, or I should say this year's school, and I'll be going back to work over the summer. And I should have a few interesting projects going on in the summer. So, I will keep you guys up to date. I'm sure, this video went out to be 20 minutes long, but uh, yeah, I've missed you guys. I miss talking to you guys. So, thank you very much for watching. Hope you found this enjoyable. And that is the Lenovo ThinkPad T60.